Hey, Meg Dowen here. Today we are taking a look at Black Knight. He's part of the Fortnite Legendary series from Jazzwares. I got this figure from Walmart for $19.97, and this is an exciting find. And I'm actually surprised it took them this long to release a figure like this. We'll flip the box around, take a peek here at the back. Black Knight, the odious scourge of the Wailing Woods. Oh man, he, it's just great art. Down here we've got the cross sale, and I am still looking for Cyclo and Vendetta. We'll have a Sentinel video, review video, coming up soon. For those who want to see the barcode, here it is. It's time to get this figure out of the box. If you're new to the channel, welcome, and please subscribe so you'll be notified of future videos. If you want to help the channel out and you play Fortnite, please feel free to add my creator code to your epic account. It's McDowan. Black Knight is a legendary skin, and he's part of the Fortnite's set. Released in Chapter 1, Season 2, this skin was part of the Battle Pass at Tier 70. As you can see, he has a lot of gear. As far as the accessories go, we get the Axcalibur Harvesting Tool. It looks like a nice uh, harvesting tool. We get the Black Shield Back Bling. I like that design on there. It's pretty nice. You get the peg that'll fit on the back. And if you want, you can actually position his hand to hold onto this peg if you want to try to make it to where he's actually holding a shield. I like that. We get a firefly jar, and this is really neat. This is just a cool little accessory. It's got a nice little latch system over here. It's got the holes or representation of holes so they can breathe, I guess, in the jar. And you get the little fireflies, although they are little like orange blobs, just little orange circles. But wouldn't it be cool if they actually lit up? I know. Engineering and all. We get a gas can, and it looks filthy, doesn't it? Now we just need a whiplash or a bear truck for 6-inch. Wouldn't that be awesome? A vehicle for the 6-inch that we can actually use this to pour it in the gas tank. But that's a, that's a neat, neat little accessory right there. We also get a crossbow, and this sucker popped on me as I pulled it out of the box. What I mean by popped is that... Oh, I don't know. Can you see right here? Let me pull out my knife. Right here, right there, and right there, there are some stress marks. What I mean by popped is this cross piece uh, fell off. I'm trying to be gentle. So it popped out like it broke apart or something. And looking right here, it almost looks like there is an actual break. But I look on the the same portion here on the actual gun and I don't see it there's also what appears to be like a stress mark here if you can see that yeah that little white spot that's a bit of a I think a stress mark or something in there it's really weird and again here there's another white mark and I'm not sure if that's a, a crack or a stress 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 mark or what it's just kind of weird this whole thing the entire thing other thing that I noticed is that there is a lot, I hope this is in focus, there is a lot of extra plastic along this side. Uh, the plastic that I guess leaks out as it, they're molding it, but down here on the top, in the front, it's pretty light, I hope you can see it. So I'll have to use my knife later to cut all that out, but this is like kind of weird, I haven't seen one of their accessory weapons needs so much care. I'm not sure if that's the right way to say it, care. Anyway, then we get a pump shotgun. This looks just like a lot of the ones we've seen before. Black and brown. And finally, we get an assault rifle. I like the assault rifles. I think the design looks nice. It's... I don't know. I can't tell if this is a a wearing uh they're trying to make it look like a wear like it's been scratched up or if this is actually bad paint job or what it's difficult to say i'm gonna err on the side and it's also kind of bent so we'll, we're gonna need to bend that thing back so yeah i don't know on this side the black goes up and covers this area up here not just the handle we flip it around and the black only covers the handle, not up onto the gun. The The painting on this is kind of weird. It's like it's a little bit sloppy over here. It even goes up in here. 
there's there's this little skull piece and what I from what I understand this marks this as an OG assault rifle I believe that this was on the old version the old styles of the assault rifles and then they retired them or vaulted them and then we got uh, the newer ones without the skull there's like some paint marks up in here so I'm not sure if this is supposed to look like it's worn or not it's kind of weird and interesting all right let's take a look at the figure so the Black Knight figure is about six inches tall, and as you can see, he stands about the same height as the other Jazzers figure. He actually looks like he's in between the heights. Looks like Ghoul Trooper may be just a slight, a hair a bit taller, and Jonesy may be a hair shorter. Eh, bad joke, I suppose. But yeah, he's about six inches tall, so he'll line up just well with all the others. And he's kind of undersized for some of those six and a half inch lines and maybe even some of those other six lines. He has 40 points of articulation all over this figure. We'll get to some of them. I have noticed that there's a couple stiff joints, I suppose being from, oh shoot, what was it, uh, season three? Season two, I mean, that, you know, it's been a while, so he's getting older. He's got some stiff joints, right? Yeah, man, I got to quit that. All right, so let's take a look at the articulation. His head is on a ball joint, rotates around just very nicely. He does have a scarf here on his shoulders, and he's got kind of a pointy uh, metal helmet there. So looking down, well, that's about as far down as he can look. He also has got the bunchy scarf in the back, so looking up, well, yeah, it's about there. He, he, he's not going to do a whole lot there, unfortunately. His arms at the shoulder will rotate. There is butterfly joints, at least that's what... I'm looking in here at his armpits. Uh, his arms, by the way, will go up that high. But the the, uh, <laughs> the butterfly joint doesn't really do a lot. He has a bicep rotation, double pin at the elbow. He has a rotation at the wrist and a hinge at the wrist. And there is where some of the stiffness comes in. I haven't been able to articulate either of the wrists on the hinge yet, so I'm gonna have to heat those things up. His fingers have the classic Jazzwares hinge for the fingers. So, yep, there you go. He's got a pretty good torso side to side. He goes there, goes there, kind of hiding from the light. We'll go sideways. If you want him to go lean back, well, that's about how far back he goes with the torso, and that's about as far as he goes forward. So really, torso is just for good wiggling back and forth and side to side. His waist works quite well. So well, in fact, that his middle soft rubber, this is a soft uh, rubber, did I say soft metal? But soft rubber middle piece. So if you try to make him do the splits, the right leg works quite well. He's got this pouch on his uh, left thigh, so it doesn't go up very far. His thighs have a rotation right there, the thigh cut. And it only goes so far on the left side because the pouch, the one on the right, turns all the way around. He has double pin at the knee. There is a rotation at the top of the boot. Both of them work pretty well. This actually is a pretty good figure for right out of the box articulation. At least mine is. He's got a hinge at the ankle. Go down that far. Go up about that far. There's a pivot back and forth. And finally, a toe hinge right there. So overall, yeah, he is a pretty good... Well, overall articulation is what I should be saying. His uh, articulation is actually pretty good right out of the box. He doesn't have very many problems. I can't get the right uh, shoulder to bend up, and I don't want to break it. So I'm going to have to heat up this joint right there. Neither of his hands or neither of his... Uh, wrists want to you do the hinge, so I'm going to have to heat them up as well. And I'm sure once I heat them up, it's going to be fine. The biggest thing for me, generally speaking, are the legs. As long as the legs are working fine, then anything else can generally be fixed. But uh, this is a really cool figure. I like the look of him. Let's gear him up here real quick. We'll pop on his black shield. Slides on quite well. You might be wondering, as with every Jazzwares figure, how do the finger hinges work well they work about as well as you might expect there is on this assault rifle there's no little trigger hole here to tuck a finger in so it's going to work well as well as you might think you can squeeze it on it does not lock into place at all and i didn't realize my camera was going out of focus let's uh fix that here and stop the auto the autofocus is off i 
apologize if we've been having focusing issues. But uh, he put the assault rifle in his hand. We'll tighten his fingers down, and he can hold it a little bit. You're not going to do a lot of this. You're probably going to put him up on a shelf. Going to display this guy. Fingers work just fine that way. He can reach his hands to where he can hold a barrel if you want. It's kind of a clumsy way of doing it, but you could do this. Take that out. Going to get hand him a gas can. So he can hold the gas can. How about the firefly jar? Well, I'm not really sure how he's meant to hold this firefly jar. There is this little uh, translucent, clear translucent outcropping. I think you shove your, his hand in like that. Yeah, that seems to work. So he can hold on to the firefly jar and the gas can really pretty well. I have to look at that. Oh, look, there is a hole. There is a hole right there. Didn't see that till now. You can put the crossbow in his hand and tighten it down. There's a spot you can shove his trigger finger up in there. He's going to hold that really well as, well, as good. <laughs> so yeah, he can hold the crossbow, I think, really pretty good. Finally, the last weapon would be the pump shotgun. And I think most figures generally hold the pump shotgun really well once you get the finger in the right spot. Yeah. Once you get the finger into that little area there, then it's no problem. So by default, weapon-wise, just by, by the way they are designed, he holds the weapons really well. Harvesting tools are always the problem because if you want him to hold it with one hand, well, that's cool. I mean, you can, but it's going to loosen up really pretty quick. You go up here. More towards the base of the tool. It's getting kind of thick. And it's going to be pretty floppy pretty quick. So if you want him to hold the harvesting tool, it's going to have to be a two-handed job. Something like that. Which is still pretty good. I mean, he looks pretty good, I think. Holding a harvesting tool like that. I mean, this is his Excalibur, after all. So I think this displays quite well all by itself. So that is the geared up portion. So overall, I think this is a crazy awesome figure and I really like it. The design and the detailing look great. You got little bits of silver around here. You got the red on his helmet. This is just a great looking figure, I think. So this, re you know what this reminds me of? This figure reminds me of the first couple of waves of the Legendary series. When we got characters like the Skull Trooper, and we got Jonesy, Tomato Head. They had this kind of lower body, half port. <laughs> I can't keep him standing now. This lower portion. I mean, the the first waves had very Fortnite-looking figures that made you really think, oh, these are from the game. And it was really cool. And I know the line has had its ups and downs, but generally speaking, we've had a lot of good figures, and I will miss this line. Anyway, now let's wrap this up before we get too sentimental or too down on it. Let's see what you think. It's your turn. What do you think about this figure? Leave your thoughts in that comment section down below. But on your way out, or and on your way out, however you want to say it, on your way out, if you haven't already, check out my review of Seeker in the lower left-hand corner. Thank you for stopping by and watching. If you enjoyed this video or and or this type of content, please like this video and share it everywhere because it really helps the channel to grow. I will see you in the next video.